us to be in our right minds and have the active use of our limbs, God. Lord, we ask that you forgive us of anything, forgive me of anything, God, that I've done that's against your will and your way, God. Take out anything that's not like you so that your word can go forth, God. Let me de decrease as you increase, oh God, and let the people grasp something from your word oh, oh today, God, that you have given me, God. And Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Oh Lord, you are my strength and you are my redeemer. And Lord, we just thank you, thank you, thank you. And we can never thank you enough and appreciate you enough. Yeah. And we cancel every assignment of the devil on today, God, in the name of Jesus. Let no ear be blocked in the name of Jesus for the blood be veiled. In the name of Jesus that we pray, amen. amen. Yes, we are. I'm nervous. It's been a long time. <laughs> uh, well, today, um, today is a, a different subject. I prayed numerous times about it because I said, uh, do you really want me to say this? So um, the subject God has given me today is wanting the power without the purification. All right, now. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, and my foundation scripture, because I have a couple other scriptures I'm using as points. My foundation scripture will be coming from Jeremiah chapter 23, verses 1 through 4. When you have it, say amen. 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 I'm going to go ahead and start. It says, Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, saith the Lord. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, God of Israel, against the pastures that feed my people. Ye have scattered my flock and driven them away, and have not visited them. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doings, saith the Lord. And I will gather the remnant of my flock, out of all countries, whither I have driven them, and I will bring them again to their folds, and they shall be fruitful and increase. And I will set up shepherds over them which shall feed them, and they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed, neither shall they be lacking, saith the Lord. Amen. Amen. And I took a few notes here um, on that scripture, and one word that stuck out to me in that passage was the remnant. And a lot of people say the word remnant, but they don't know what it means. And the remnant means a small part, a quantity, mm -hmm. and the light. All right. God is raising up a people who will seek him in all things, not just some things, but all things. Amen. Not afraid to face man because we wrestle not against flesh and blood anyway. We wrestle against the spirits and principalities. Mm -hmm. And an example that you can never go wrong with is using the resurrection of Jesus. The cross represents the power and the position. Jesus was placed in that position so he could die for our sins. He had to go to the cross to receive the power that he needed. And the blood represents the purification that purified our sins for us to live today so that we can just go to him in repentance. We no longer have to slay the animals and put them on the altar. A point here, um, another point here I made is if the power isn't gained through purification, which is through the blood of Jesus and guidance of the Holy Ghost, whose power are you operating in? Right now. Are you operating in your own power? Do you get up and sing before the Lord in flesh? Or do you go before him in secret and ask him to decrease yourself so that may he be glorified right. and not ourselves? Because oftentimes we can become our own religion yeah. and idolize ourselves right. instead of listening to the move of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And some people may get mad saying, oh, well, why are they in church so long? Or why they always do it that way? Or why the Lord had them go this way today? It's not about you. It's about what the Lord wants. And he knows exactly what he's doing. Mm -hmm. And I would like to use Proverbs chapter 3, 
verse 5 and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Lean not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. There's a reason why he tells us not to lean to our own understandings, because we don't know the way. He created us. We must listen to the one who knows all things. And how dare we think we know how to do everything. Amen? Amen. Amen. Y'all still with me? Y'all still with me? Amen. 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 Operating in the flesh will leave you with decisions of destruction. No matter how many times you try to do this and that, no matter how many ways you try to work it out on your own, it always leads to a path of destruction. You can work 50 hours a week. If that's not what God wanted you to do, if that's not the job God ordained for you, it's not going to work. Your bills are not going to be paid. I don't care how much money you make. It's all going to just disappear. Oftentimes we get caught up in self using Jesus' name in vain as a patch-up label, as I like to describe it. We get up with our own doctrines, our own methods. I've seen preachers throw the Bible on the floor after they get through reading or scattering through the Word of God. And how dare we disrespect the man who put us here. Amen? Amen. Right? The church has brought the world inside of God's house. With concerns of who gets the fame, the fortune, the title, who's going to be the pastor, who's going to be the bishop. And oftentimes we forget to go to God as far as who should be our leader. And yes, we have to obey the laws of the land, but we also have the word of God to live by. And we're supposed to be set apart and not of the world. We're in the world, but not of the world. Amen? Amen. And today's world, I would say the saints have become brainwashed, almost like a slave mentality of... You know, everybody lift your hands or everybody exalt the Lord and we let any and everything get up and pour into our souls. And we have to, as people of God, discern whether that should be happening or not because your soul is very valuable. Your soul is what's going to go to heaven or hell, whatever, wherever you spend your eternity and we're praying for heaven. Amen? Amen. <laughs> and brainwashing with today's trends. There's nothing wrong with expressing yourself. But if you have the Holy Ghost on the inside, I don't think you want to walk around with lime green hair or purple <laughs> hair or well, how can someone be comfortable to stand up and sing or preach or do anything in short skirts? And I used to hear of my grandmother saying and some uh, older mothers say, you know, you can't come to the house of God with this on and with that on it. I had to learn from myself, like, what does that mean? What does that have to do with serving God? But once the Lord dwells on the inside, it changes right. everything about you right. on the outside, Amen. including Amen. the way you dress, the way you wear your hair, mm -hmm. and most importantly, how you live your lifestyle. Amen. You can't say you're a servant of God, and then during the week, you're doing what you want to do. Mm -hmm. And nobody can tell the difference whether you are for God or for not for God. Amen. Amen. Another point I would like to make is, we as people need to address the issues and not ignore the issues of the church. My Lord. And the last passage of scripture I like to use is Mark chapter 8, verse 34 through 38. And here it says, And when he had called the people unto him, which his disciples also, he said unto them, Whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself, and take up his cross, and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, but whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospels, the same shall save it. For what shall it profit a man if he gain the whole world and lose his soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my words in the adulterous and sinful generation of him, also shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he cometh in the glory of his Father with holy and well, I'm sorry, excuse me, with holy angels. Amen. So
so we have to take up our cross and follow Jesus. Not follow man, not follow the President of the United States because he is not our Savior. Amen. Amen. And oftentimes we forget when people get in high places, we tend to put them on this platform like they're not human anymore. Once they've been elevated as whoever they are, whatever they're over, it's like they're no longer human. People begin to worship them without even noticing. People will stand up for the bishop before they'll stand up for Jesus, and it shouldn't be that way, amen? amen. We have to cleanse ourselves before bringing souls to Christ, amen? amen. We can't bring souls to Christ if we're not clean ourselves, amen? amen. And we have to cleanse ourselves daily. Amen. There's nothing wrong with being blessed. There's nothing wrong with being prosperous. Amen. But we cannot replace Amen. Jesus with prosperity. Amen. We have to put Jesus before all things. You may have a busy schedule, working, you know, you have your girlfriend's night out or family day or whatnot, but never forget who brought you here and who kept you here each day. The remnant must take a stand in God's house. <coughs> Why are we so afraid to take a stand? We oftentimes know when something's going wrong mm -hmm. during a worship service or a church event or a gospel event or a positive event. And we know when somebody says something wrong or does something wrong and we just continue to let them. What happened to the church that will stand up and say, that's not of God? And we believe right. the blood of Jesus over that. Right. In these last days, you have to stand yeah. for the kingdom completely. Amen. We're in the last and evil days. God yeah. is moving very, very swiftly. And he has the people over here that he wants to do for him. And he's saying it's time out. It's time out for Playing with God is time out for, come on and lift your hands and bless the Lord. And then when you leave, oh, I'm going to the club tonight. It don't work like that. Right. Because what's in you will come out when you minister, whether you want it to or not. And ministry is singing, dancing, speaking, writing poetry, whatever your gift God has blessed you with. Don't let the world win. The world is beginning to overtake I've heard preachers say, well, we have to change and we have to. God said, I change is not. Why should we have to change how we do and how we operate for the sake of the world? Um, often, oftentimes, I used to wonder, why do, you know, the women of the church push wearing skirts and things of that sort? And now I understand because you have to present yourself like a child of God. You can't get up exposing your body and expecting someone to hear you when all they see is your flesh. God is ruler over all, and if he dwells in you, there's no reason to be afraid of anything. There are many strong forces, as we know, there are strong forces in our school. They're taking prayer out. They're arresting people for even mentioning the name of Jesus or mentioning God or even mentioning prayer all over the U.S. And because we're so distracted by the festivities of holidays and things, we for often forget what's happening behind closed doors with the government, with the Senate, with the president. People are begin beginning to be more greedy than ever in the U.S. and all over the world. He didn't spare us with the crucifixion just to sit back and do anything. The crucifixion, the whole purpose of the crucifixion was so we that can repent of our sins, be cleansed of ourselves so we can go help others. If the world can work in unity, so can the church. In the world, for we are not, we are in the world, but we are not of the world. I see so many secular artists that can work together, but preachers getting up talking about the next preacher. And we're destroying ourselves. It's almost like the script has flipped. 
It's like the world is coming together, they're having a good time, they're working in unity, even though it's the wrong thing, they're together. While the church is just stabbing each other in the back. And what's the whole purpose of that? It's because we forgot about Jesus and the blood of Jesus and who's ruler over all things. So with that, please do not strive for the power without the purification of the blood of Jesus. Pray my strength. Amen. Amen.